feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign Welcome back to FAQ The Madness. We respectfully exercise our First Amendment right to publish interactions with government officials through the unbiased view of a camera. Let's jump into another ref. Recording. This is the third and final part of the motion to grant summary judgment for the defendants. If you haven't listened to the first and second parts, there will be links in the description and in the pinned comments, which will allow you to get to those links. The defendants meet their burden of showing that there was no such unlawful policy and it was not the moving force behind the entry into Douglas apartment. The burden therefore shifts to Douglas to show a genuine issue of material fact in support of this claim. Douglas points to the 30B6 testimony of Detective Elizabeth Reyes, but the court finds that it does not show that there is an LAPD policy which allows officers to, quote, enter a residence without a warrant and in the absence of exigent circumstances if the door of the residence was opened, end quote. Motion at 62. Douglas not, does not actually cite to any testimony from Reyes that states this explicitly. However, Douglas does offer a certain portion of her testimony in his facts. Specifically, Douglas states that Reyes said, quote, the officers would break a door down to enter just based on that information, end quote. In fact, Reyes stated the opposite in her deposition, that the officers, quote, would not break a door down to enter just based on that information. Exhibit 14. Emphasis added. 16 footnote. At the hearing, counsel for Douglas clarified that this was a typo in the PSUF, but the court does not, does not find that this changes the analysis. Moreover, Douglas cannot show that any such policy was the, quote, moving force, end quote, in this case, given that it is undisputed that the officers entered lawfully without a warrant and exigent circumstances because he permitted them to enter. It appears to the court that Douglas would have this court conclude that a policy permitting officers to enter without a warrant would also permit the officers to remain in an individual's home regardless of whether they uh, withdrew consent. But as discussed, Douglas has not carried his burden with respect to showing that there wasn't any policy permitting officers to enter or remain without a warrant. Accordingly, Douglas has failed to create a genuine issue of material fact and the defendants are entitled to summary judgment in their favor. Footnote 17. The defendants also argue that this theory was not properly preserved. Douglas responds that it is based upon newly discovered evidence, motion at 58 through 59 and 61. The court need not reach this issue in light of its finding that there is no genuine issue of material fact with respect to the existence of this policy. The court grants defendant's motion as to Douglas's Monell claim. F. There are disputed issues of material fact with respect to plaintiff's Bain Act claim, sixth, sixth cause of action. Defendants bring summary judgment as to Douglas' sixth cause of action under the Bain Act. The Bain Act provides that a police officer may not use a, quote, threat, intimidation, or coercion to interfere with the exercise of a person's constitutional right. The Bain Act does not require that such coercion be, quote, independent from the constitutional violation alleged, end quote, but does require, quote, a specific intent, end quote, to violate the right. Reese v. County of Sacramento, 888-F.3D, 1030, 9th Circuit, 2018. Quote, it is not necessary for the defendants to have been thinking in constitutional or legal terms at the time of the incidents, because a reckless disregard for a person's constitutional rights is evidence of a specific intent to deprive that person of those rights, end quote. ID at 1045, emphasis omitted. Defendants rely heavily on the argument 
that there were no constitutional violations to begin with, which the court has determined a reasonable jury could find. Motion at 65. Moreover, as addressed with the retaliation and ADA claims, a reasonable jury could find that the officers acted with at least reckless disregard, if not a specific intent, to violate Douglas' rights. Accordingly, summary judgment, judgment must be denied as to this claim. G. There are disputed issues of material fact with respect to plaintiff's battery claim, seventh cause of action. Defendants also move on Douglas's claim of battery. Footnote 18. Defendants also make arguments regarding an assault claim, but given that Douglas titled the seventh cause of action solely as one for battery and does not address the argument on assault and opposition, the court considers the assault claim waived. As against a police officer, a battery claim requires a showing of unreasonable force. Edson v. City of Anaheim, 63 Cal APP.4-1269-1272-1991 Nelson v. City of Davis, 709 F Supplemental 2D-978-992-1991 e.d.cal.apr.29.2010 As analyzed above, the court finds genuine issues of material fact as to the reasonableness of the officer's use of force against Douglas. See Salmon v. Robbins, 173 F.3D, 1150-1156-57, 9th Circuit, 1999 treating sections 1983 and state law battery claims similarly, thus the court denies summary judgment as to the battery claim. H. There are disputed issues of material fact with respect to plaintiff's false arrest and imprisonment claim, eighth cause of action. Defendants move on Douglas's claim of false arrest and imprisonment arguing that the officers are immune under California Penal Code Section 874B if they had probable cause, footnote 19. The court notes that Section 874B appears to have been repealed. Nevertheless, the court accepts the general proposition that an arrest is lawful if probable cause exists. See Beck v. Ohio, 379 U.S., 8991-1964. Motion at 71. However, as discussed previously, the court finds that there are disputed material facts as to whether the officers had probable cause to detain the Douglas. Therefore, the court denies summary judgment as to the false arrest and imprisonment claim. I. There are disputed issues of material fact with respect to plaintiff's negligence claim, ninth cause of action. Defendants move on Douglas' claim of negligence. To establish negligence, a plaintiff must show that 1. The defendant had a duty to use due care, 2. The defendant breached that duty, and 3. The breach was the proximate or legal cause of the plaintiff's injury. Hayes v. County of San Diego, 57, Cal, 4th, 622, 629, 2013. California negligence claims are broader than Fourth Amendment claims and consider the totality of the circumstances, ID at 629 and 638. Defendants rely on their argument that the officers had probable cause to detain Douglas and reasonable force was used. As the court has already found these two issues to be in dispute, the court denies summary judgment as to the negligence claim. J. There are disputed issues of material fact with respect to plaintiff's negligent supervision claim, 10th cause of action. Defendants bring summary judgment as to Douglas's claim for negligent supervision. Negligent supervision can be brought against the city only vicariously through the acts of a supervisor, in this case, Sergeant Kang, D. Veers v. County of San Diego, 2007. Quote, to establish negligent supervision, a plaintiff must show that a person in a supervisorial position over the actor had prior knowledge of the actor's propensity to do the bad act, end quote. ZV v. County of Riverside, 238 Cal, APP, 4th, 889, 902, 2015. 
However, the defendants have met their burden in showing that there is no evidence in the record reflecting that the officers had a, quote, propensity to commit any bad acts or that Kang would have had such knowledge of a propensity before the incident. Rather, the evidence shows that Kang arrived at the scene after Douglas was already in custody and Wheeler told Kang that Douglas, quote, immediately got irate, end quote, and that Douglas has been, quote, completely irate the whole time, end quote. Kang appears to have solely acted under the information he was given by Wheeler. Douglas has not pointed to any genuine issue of material fact to support that Kang knew or should have known that the officers were acting unlawfully or had a propensity to do so. Accordingly, the court grants summary judgment with respect to this cause of action. K. Defendants are not entitled to immunity under state law. Defendants first argue that they are entitled to immunity California Government Code Section 820.2, which provides that a public employee, quote, is not liable for an injury resulting from his act or omission where the act or omission was the result of the exercise of the discretion vested in him, end quote. Nevertheless, the Ninth Circuit has instructed that section, that quote, Section 820.2, Immunity does not apply to an officer's decision to detain or arrest, end quote. Liberal v. Estrada, 632 F3D, 1064, 1084, and 85, Ninth Circuit, 2011, explaining that immunity is reserved for, quote, basic policy decisions, end quote, not, quote, operational decisions by the police purporting to apply the law, end quote. 20 footnote. While defendants point to case law from a district court immunizing actions which are, quote, incidental to the investigation of crimes, uh, end quote, the court noted that the case reference was discussing immunity in the context of section 826, 820.6, not section 820.2. See Porter v. City of Davis Police Department, but that case stated that neither the discretionary immunity of section 820.2 nor other section immunized the city from legal consequences of the officer's negligence. Moreover, defendants acknowledge that section 820.2 immunity is inapplicable where excessive force is used because there is a genuine issue of material fact as to whether excessive force was used here. Defendants are not entitled to the statutory immunity at this stage. Defendants also argue that they are immune from liability based on Government Code Section 820.4, which provides that a public employee, quote, is not liable for his act or omission exercising due care in the execution or enforcement of any law, end quote. Cal G GOVT G Code Section 820.4. However, the statute does not, quote, exonerate a public employee from liability for false arrest or false imprisonment, end quote. ID, defendants appear to concede that section 820.4 would not apply to Douglas's claim for false arrest and imprisonment, but argue that it would be applicable to any other state claims, motion at 81. However, section 820.4 is explicit that it protects public employees from liability when, quote, exercising due care, end quote, which is the negligence standard. Cal Government, Governmental Code, Section 820.4, emphasis added. Therefore, the defendants are not entitled to this immunity with respect to Douglas's negligence cause of action. Moreover, Douglas's other claims will all arise from the same allegations as his excessive force claim, and the court finds that similarly, the defendants are not entitled to immunity at this stage on the other claims. See Robinson v. Solano County. 27, uh, 278, F3D, 1007, 1016, 9th Circuit, 2002. Quote, most of the state law claims arise from the allegation that the individual officers use excessive force and California denies immunity to police officers who use excessive force in arresting a suspect. <clears throat> Finally, as addressed previously, WIC section 5278 
is inapplicable for purposes of immunity if it is found that the officer did not act in accordance with the law, so defendants are not entitled to this form of immunity either. The court denies summary judgment with respect to all of the forms of state law immunity sought by the defendants. Conclusion. For the foregoing reasons, the court hereby orders as follows. 1. The motion for summary judgment is granted as to Douglas's Monell claim. 2. The motion for summary judgment is granted as to Douglas's 10th cause of action for negligent supervision and 3. The motion for summary judgment is denied as to all other claims, namely as to Douglas's first cause of action for unconstitutional detention, second cause of action for excessive force, third cause of action for retaliation, fourth cause of action for violation of due process, fifth cause of action for violation of the ADA, sixth cause of action under the Bain Act, seventh cause of action for battery, eighth cause of action for false arrest and imprisonment, and ninth cause of action for negligence. It is so ordered, dated October 3rd, 2023, and signed by United States District Judge Mame Uwusi Mensa Frimpong. Thank you for watching. If you have a video you'd like for us to cover, use the submit link in the description or pinned comment. If you enjoyed this one, consider subscribing and hit the bell to be notified of future content. Be sure to check out all of the other content we have for your edutainment. We will continue to respectfully exercise our First Amendment rights and publish the interactions we have with government officials. Remember to like, share, and leave a comment. It's the easiest way for you to let us know your thoughts about our channel. I want to be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement. The top is so vacant. I don't hear shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and you'll be put down. It ain't your place. All this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it. The noose it fits. Some loose shit. A stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip. You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Oh.